Hello and welcome to another episode of the Pharmaceutical Calculation Solve Along. If you're a pharmacy student, then one of the things you should be really good at is calculating and solving osmolarity calculation type questions. And especially if you are a pharmacy student in the United States, it's one of the topics that is examined or maybe examined on the NAPLEX board exam. And so in this video, we're going to solve two important osmolarity calculation questions and this video is actually part three in a three part in a five part series if you like to watch the first two parts or you have not watched that then i'll put links to that in the description and i'll also put that in the cards and if you have any questions and you're watching this live put your questions in the chat box if you happen to be watching the replay just put them in the comments and i will address them as soon as i see them so let's get right to it the question actually says, calculate the osmolarity of two liters of dextrose, 10% in water, with molecular weight 180, round to the nearest tenth, do not include units. So the way the question is framed, the first thing we want to do is start off with the osmolarity calculation equation. and the equation we're referring to is milliosmoles per liter is equal to the weight of substance in grams per liter divided by the molecular weight times number of particles times 1,000. And so, if you wanted the process, then there's a three-part process. And the first one is to be able to determine what the molecular weight is. We've already been given the molecular weight, which is 180. So we don't need to calculate anything here. But what we do need is the number of particles. Now, for the number of particles, what we have is dextrose. And because dextrose is a non-electrolyte that means when you put it in an aqueous environment you put it in water it's not going to dissociate so in which case the number of particles here is one so this is one of those type of questions where the component that you have is a non-electrolyte and because of that the number of particles is one most of the time sometimes as students we forget that we it's only electrolytes that dissociate right so this is an important tip to keep stenciled in your mind Non-electrolytes like dextrose, mannose, they do not dissociate, and so the number of particles is one. And so the last piece would be to determine what the weight in grams per liter is. And we get that information using the concentration. So here you have 10%, which is a percentage concentration. So that implies you have 10 grams in 100 milliliters. Now, because we want it in grams per liter, we need to determine how many grams will be in a liter. And the liter is a thousand milliliters. And so what we can do is we can solve for X, which is our unknown. So that would imply X equals 10 grams times 1000 milliliters divided by 100 milliliters the milliliters cancel out and you can get rid of some of the zeros. And so that ends up giving you 100 grams in a liter. So we can go ahead and put this information back into the equation, which will imply that you have milliosmos per liter being equal to 100 divided by the molecular weight which is 180 times the number of particles, which is one times 1000. And if you go ahead and do the math and observe all the conditions in the question, which says round to the nearest 10th, do not include units. Then our answer would be 555.6. So that's how you solve this particular question. The key takeaway in terms of important concepts is the idea of 
what to do when you have a non-electrolyte like dextrose. That's what's important to reinforce. And of course, how to make use of the percentage concentration to determine the weight of substance in grams per liter. Now let's move on to do the second question. So here the question says, how many milliosmoles of sodium are present in two liters of 5% sodium chloride solution? Round to the nearest tenth, do not include units. Now, this is one of those questions. Yeah, so I do see, maybe I just need to go back. I see a question in the chat box. Uh, let me just... Yeah, the question was asking for two liters. And that's actually a very good question. But let me uh, expand upon that. It's asking for two liters, but what we notice is when we talk about concentration, what we are looking for is the amount in grams per liter. So that value is actually determined by the concentration in there. So when we say 10% is 10 grams in 100 ml, if we're doing that for 2,000 liters, we will still end up with the same concentration. Okay, so yes, I know this number can play an important role, but the value that actually goes here in this type of questions is actually based off the concentration. Because at the end of the day, you need to figure out how many grams would be in a liter. So maybe just to expand upon that for she makes this question. If we found 10% of 2 liters, that will actually end up being we have 200 grams in 2,000 milliliters. But we, and that will give us 10%. But what we need to put in there is per liter. So we still will need to reduce this down to a liter, which would then be 100 grams in 1,000 ml or liter. So what you can do is bypass this step and simply use this value and figure out what is in 1,000. Okay, so that's an excellent question. All right, thank you, Chimex. I'm glad you found it useful. All right, so back to the second question. In this question, it says, how many milliosmoles of sodium are present in two liters of 5% sodium chloride solution? Round to the nearest tenth, do not include units. Now, for this type of question, the best approach is to use the, this equation. You have milliosmoles being equal to millimoles times the number of particles. So the strategy will be, because we are looking for milliosmoles of sodium alone, we don't have any information on sodium. What we have is information on sodium chloride. So we are going to find the millimoles of sodium chloride and then based on the stoichiometry of the equation, we will find out what the proportion is of millimoles of sodium chloride to sodium and use that expression to figure out the millimoles of sodium and then put that back into the equation. So what that means if, in terms of how that will look like is when you have sodium chloride, that dissociates into a sodium cation and the chloride anion. So what we notice is one millimole of sodium chloride gives you one millimole of sodium. So let's go ahead and find out the millimoles of sodium. Now the way you find millimoles is the quantity in milligrams divided by the molecular weight in milligrams per millimole. And the strategy then is to figure out, well, what is the molecular weight of sodium chloride? That is something we are supposed to kind of memorize, so it's about 58.44. Uh, we'll need that later on. But then the question is, how many milligrams actually do we have? So that is where the concentration information becomes very important. All right. So 5% implies that you have 5 grams in 100 milliliters. But mind you, we are interested in the milliosmoles of sodium in 2 liters. So we ought to figure out, first of all, we can go how many grams are in 2 liters. Now for conversion, 2 liters would be 2,000 milliliters because 1 liter is 1,000 milliliters. All right. So... Let's go ahead and solve for x here. 
and that will give us 5 grams out of 100 milliliters times the 2,000 milliliters. The liters cancel out. You can get rid of some of the zeros, and that will give us 100 grams. But notice millimoles is milligrams per molecular weight. So it will be good to do a quick conversion. And what we know or we want to recall is one gram is a thousand milligrams. Okay? So the grams cancel out, and you do end up with a rather huge number, which would be 100,000 milligrams. So we can now go ahead and put that in the millimole equation. So the millimoles. Now, up until this point, what we are dealing with is millimoles of sodium chloride. That's what we are looking for, okay? So we have a 100,000 milligrams of sodium chloride. Molecular weight is 58.44. And that should give us 1711.16. That is millimole. But what we want to do is we need to see the millimoles of NaCl to the millimole of sodium itself. And because the ratio here, so what we are doing is we are using the stoichiometry. And although we don't, because it's one, we don't put it in here, we have one millimole giving you one millimole, one millimole. Okay? So for our purposes, the ratio is one to one. Okay? So since we figured out that you have one seven one one point six point one six point one six millimole, then we can also determine what the millimole of sodium will be. And if we do the math, it's actually going to be the same value, but just for completeness, we'll end up with one seven one one point one six. So now that we figured out this millimoles of sodium, we can go back and use the original equation to figure out the milliosmoles of the sodium. So the milliosmoles is going to be equal to the millimoles of sodium, which we just calculated here, to be 1711.16. We multiply that by the number of particles. Now for sodium, you just have one ion, so that will be times one, and you end up with 1711.16. But notice that the question says round to the nearest tenth, do not include units. And so the real answer there will be 1711.2. So in terms of take home message, for these type of problems, it's much more easy and convenient to use this version of the equation, okay? compared to the one that we used in the previous example. And then we make use of the stoichiometry to determine the mole, molar ratio, and then use that information and put that back in the equation. All right, so I think I've answered all the questions I do see in the chat, and there are none in the comments. Now, if you wanted to do actually most of these questions, because these questions are actually coming from this quiz. And so we've done, because this is part three, we've done six of the questions. And so we are still left with four more to do. So you can go in there and do some practice, you know, get yourself all situated. And it's the way the questions are framed are like NAPLEX style. So you provide your own answer. And it's also time. So it helps you know how fast you can do it. All right. So. I'm going to stop here and then we'll continue parts four and five with another set of two questions each. If you have any questions, just leave them in the comments. I'll get to them as soon as I see them. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.